So, good afternoon, everybody. And um, I'm welcoming all of you for this webinar devoted to the Ayurveda, because this month we have more uh, lectures about Ayurveda, because uh, on the 23rd of October, it's International Ayurveda Day celebration. So we had uh, different themes covered by from the field of Ayurveda. And uh, for today, we have one very interesting field um, from Ayurveda, and this is the field of the relation and behavior, and it's called Achara Rasayana. So the, the theme of this um, lecture will be Achara Rasayana from Ayurveda to strengthen our immune system and achieve the state of uh, health. So we will see what Achara Rasayana is and how it is um, explained in the ancient text of Ayurveda, uh, Shushruta Samkhita. But I also added some other texts for this lecture and uh, as a reference for the knowledge which we will be considering. So I will just start with the a PowerPoint presentation, and along with that, we will be continuing our uh, lecture. Okay. So, um, you everybody see the presentation? Yes. Yes. Very good. So, <laughs> the, as I said, yes. the the theme is Ayurveda and Achara Rasayana for strong immunity and health. And the references for this lecture will be Charaka Samhita and the Yoga Philosophy of Patanjali and the Bible. I took these three uh, texts as a reference because in Ayurveda, in Charaka Samhita, in that text, um, you will find recommendations, what is uh, good for the health, and, but not in which way to achieve that, to be able to um, practically leave those recommendations in your life. It's just information, just information, but not uh, explain the practice in which way to apply this especially in the field of uh, behavior and relation. And that's why the other text, Yoga Philosophy of Patanjali, the, the yoga is experiential science. So the yoga is experiential science. It means it is uh, the main focus of yoga is to give you experience and the method, how you can uh, transform your consciousness to get experience of what Ayurveda is speaking about, how you should be and how you should behave, to be able to, to do the practice, to become like that. And then uh, in the Bible, in the life of uh, Jesus Christ is as example of someone who uh, that all knowledge was um, living in the life, uh, putting into the practice as a wisdom so that's why these three aspects are covering um, the uh, that theme and please if uh, you can switch off your microphones if somebody has on uh, so that uh, there is no disturbance okay so then we start from ayurveda from charaka samhita um, Charaka Samhita is speaking. Um, 
Just a second. Uh, Charaka Samhita is speaking about the urges which should uh, not be uh, not to be suppressed. So then one text says from the Sutra Sthana says one should not suppress natural urges relating, relating to urine. It means the urination should not be suppressed. And these are kind of a natural urges, which are uh, organized for the normal life of our body through our autonomic nervous system, even, you know, what the body needs to do at certain time to function normally. Or fetus to eliminate from the body, or semen, flatus, vomiting, sneezing, uh, eructation, yawning, hunger, thirst, tears, sleep, and breathing caused by overexertion. So these are the natural urges of uh, our body, which should not be suppressed. Just a moment. Uh, yes, Manoharji, <laughs> you joined. Uh, so, uh, Manoharji is the second secretary of Ambassador of India in Croatia. And uh, I would like uh, that he says a few words to address you all on behalf of Embassy of India, that we are in the name of uh, the, the office of the Ministry of Ayush in the Embassy of India organizing these webinars. So please, Manoharji, then we will continue with the lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, respected Jadrankoji. On behalf of Embassy of India, Jagreb, I welcome you and mm -hmm. all our participants. Every week you are organizing very useful, very informative webinars on yoga and Ayurveda. So we are really proud of you. You are promoting Indian wisdom in Croatia. We are very proud of you and hope you will continue to do so. So now I can give you the floor, mic to start the webinar. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Thank you, Manokarji, very much. Thank you. And uh, we continue now with our team. I will start with the um, PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> so we will go to understand these urges uh, little one by one. Um, uh, natural urges. It means something what our body needs to do to maintain its uh, normal state of the life, its existence. And uh, we know that uh, we are alive and our body functions and it has a certain activity. And that activity is guided by the intelligence of the body which is organizing that activity through the neuromuscular activity mm, related to the function of the body and different movements of the body. So that intelligence of the body is uh, guiding the activity of the nervous system. Mm. It is at the basis of the activity of the nervous system and expressing its intelligence through the action of the nervous system acting upon the a skeletal muscle system and organs, inner organs and everything to organize activity of the whole body for its survival, for its survival. So the all internal organs 
inside our body, in our torso, are guided. Their life is guided by that um, autonomic nervous system. And in yoga, uh, they call this uh, vayu or the wind. The wind, the characteristic of the wind is the movement. So that uh, power, that life energy, which is giving ability of our body to move, it means to live, um, is called by that name vayu. And we have a different ability for movement in the outer space and in the inner space of our body. So that's why in yoga, they speak about different values of that one value. And they call it uh, like prana value, that um, inner movement inside the body ability of expansion, physical expansion that we can receive something in us and apana value activity of retraction so that we can eliminate something from us Samana Vayu, that we can transform something within us, the food which comes in to be transformed into the nutrition values and nourishing the body tissues, the hatus. And then uh, Udana Vayu, that we are able to stand upright and move and move against the force of gravity, that neuromuscular activity, and Samana Vayu, balancing also Vyana Vayu, moving in the space, different. Um, kind of movements of the locomotor system. So these are basic five kind of movements which our body is doing, and they should be supported in their normal function so that the body can live and survive and remain healthy. And also the body has protective movements. If something enters into the body, which is uh, not good for the body, then it has its own mechanism how to throw that out and how to balance if this is <clears throat> if there is some disbalance in the um, main activities of the body then this um, uh, other activities activate through autonomic nervous system to normalize the main activity so they are called the uh, upavayus mm -hmm. upavayus and here we can see also the, and they, are, they should not be suppressed also. One upavayu is sneezing, another eruxation, another yawning. So another, <clears throat> it is vomiting. Hmm? So these are all mentioned here, those upavayus, like uh, uh, Naga, um, Krukala, Devadatta, Dhananjaya. So like this different kind of uh, activities of our body, which are natural activities, natural urges of the body to maintain its balance. If something comes into the disbalance or main activities to eliminate some like urine, fetuses, semen, this is the uh, elimination of that. It is a panavayu, flatus, this, the function and the hunger and the thirst, taking the water, taking the food and everything. The prana vayu. So, uh, what we are speaking here about is about from the yogic point of view, the the vayu activities in our body, which are taking care of the proper life to the body. So, activities, those activities should not be suppressed hmm? because suppression is leading to the illness of those activities, and we are blocking the normal function of the vayu. And you know <laughs> that um, um, anyway, sometimes we make some condition of our body. We are putting the condition of the body in a tense condition. The muscles, some muscles are becoming too much tense, stiff, and they are blocking uh, the function of the virus. So, and then it is affecting the health of the body. So, but by our will, when these uh, activities are happening, we should neither support them overdoing in them, neither we should suppress them. We should allow them to be expressed in a normal way, how they come to happen in a normal way. So this is important. So we are not suppressing those activities, 
but neither by purpose we don't overdo those activities. Hmm? And uh, just in a normal, hmm? like this, here related to the semen, you know, the, uh, even the yogic practices should follow this advice. Hmm? For example, you will find understanding of brahmacharya sometimes, you know, like celibacy that yoga is recommending in that sense <coughs> as a suppression of the sexual urge related to the, um, also the um, elimination of semen. So the, but <coughs> the real sense of that is to be balanced. So uh, neither overdoing that, neither suppressing because suppression is creating the tension and the block and create and, and it's leading to the illness. Hmm? So <clears throat> actually brahmacharya means those, the person who is living uh, in the consciousness of God, of God, thinking of God 24 hour, this is brahmacharya, has nothing to do with sexual activity in that sense. And if someone is thinking about God, his consciousness is directed upwards, not downwards. Hmm? But if you think about brahmacharya like controlling and suppressing the sexual urge, then your consciousness is there and you are creating bigger trouble than uh, and, and making the um, tension and being frustrated and leading to the mental and physical illnesses. So uh, this kind of practices is not recommended by yoga in a true sense. So brahmacharya means that uh, you are, 24 hour feeling uh, related to the God, Ishvara Pranidhana, hmm? from, the, <clears throat> from the Niyama practice, hmm? is related to the Brahmacharya in the Yama practice. So by Ishvara Pranidhana, you can achieve Brahmacharya. Hmm? Because the Niyama, these five Niyamas, Shaucha, Santosh, Tapak, Svadhyaya, Ishvara, Pranidhana is what we should do, what we should practice, that we can achieve the qualities of Yama, which are Satya, Ahimsa, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparigraha. Hmm? Those qualities to achieve, we need to practice Niyamas. Hmm? It, it apply this in our life. And then we, if you apply Ishvara, Pranidhana, then you will achieve Brahmacharya. Hmm? but not trying to suppress nat these natural urges hmm, in that sense. So this is uh, one example, but it is related with all, all other these uh, situations like breathing. So we should not suppress the natural urge of breathing. It means if you are doing the pranayama in, in uh, yoga, the pranayama means uh, conscious regulation of the breathing should not be by the way of suppression of the breathing. It is the main instruction in pranayama is, if you are practicing kumbhaka pranayamas, it means holding of the breath after inhale or holding after exhale, then whenever comes the need to inhale, you need to inhale. Whenever comes the need to exhale, you need to exhale. You should not suppress that need, natural urge to inhale, you need to allow this to the body. If you are making suppression, you are creating discomfort in the body, leading to the tension bigger and bigger and creating the inner pressure, which is um, um, disturbing the natural balance of the body. <clears throat> so, so in relation to the pranayamas also, it is not that you get task, now you need uh, half a minute hold the breath and then without exhaling. If you have an urge to exhale, immediately you must exhale. But if you are then suppressing that need and trying to prolong more and more, then you are creating inner pressure in the inner uh, structure of the lungs, in the alveoles. So they become more expanded than it is needed. And when they become by that kind of practice more and more expanded, they are losing their elasticity. And then your alveoles will not be able anymore to, to throw the stale air out, but it will be remaining. 
you will lose the lung capacity. You will get the, the lung emphysema disease hmm? by that, that kind of the practice. When you are causing um, the uh, suppressing natural urge relating to the breathing, you will damage your lungs. So all these uh, <clears throat> things related to some functions of internal organs, if you are suppressing them, you will be getting disease related to those organs. And the second uh, uh, <clears throat> sentence says, various types of diseases occur by the suppression of these urges. For the purpose of their treatment, they are being dealt here with one by one. So then the next um, um, text is explaining for each of that urge, what is happening if you are suppressing, which kind of illness it is happening in your body. So this is, um, this is very important. <clears throat> it means once again, we should, if those urges are coming and you just allow them to express naturally, don't suppress them neither uh, by your will, try to um, make them more than it is need. Hmm? <clears throat> okay. Then uh, the next, after that, <clears throat> Charaka says about the urges which, which we should suppress. Here, the, the word suppress is um, should be understood as avoid, hmm? not to put, when you become aware of, of such things, of those things, then you should not um, continue, proceed them into the action. Hmm? And you just transform that condition. So this is what, uh, um, what Ayurveda says, but you see, uh, the text is one desirous of his well-being during his lifetime and after should suppress urges relating to ra rashness and evil deeds mentally, orally, and physically. Charaka Samhita, Sutrasthana, this. And similarly, a wise person should refrain from satisfying the urges relating to greed grief, fear, anger, vanity, shamelessness, jealousy, too much of attachment and malice. So the person should refrain from satisfying the urges. So this is that sense of suppressing those urges. In that sense, suppressing as it is mentioned in the previous sentence. <clears throat> this suppress is in that form to refrain from satisfying the urges. This, this has uh, another connotation than just suppress, because any suppression is not solving the condition. It is uh, creating the, the pressure. Suppression, suppression is creating pressure, hmm? pressure hmm? inside the nervous system and inside the mind, inside the body, everywhere. And it's uh, uh, disturbing the function, leading to the illness. Hmm? <clears throat> but what we need to do is refrain from satisfying the urges related to those. And what, is, what are those? But you see here in Ayurveda, you don't have any instruction in which way to achieve that in which way to refrain from satisfying the urges related to these things. But yoga is speaking about that. That's why I took the knowledge from yoga also in the, in the relation to cover this theme. Because yoga and Ayurveda are related very intimately. One is the part of the other. They say yoga and Ayurveda is the brother and the sister. So that's why we need to combine. Hmm? Uh, to have a complete knowledge about this theme, we need to combine 
recommendations from Ayurveda, along with the knowledge from yoga, how to achieve those recommendations practically in life. And also with the living example of a person who was ex um, expressing uh, that state in the life and um, <clears throat> the, as a, uh, the words of such a person as a, a words of wisdom. So <clears throat> then we go to the next slide. Uh, but here, just I wanted now to relate with the yoga. For example, um, in yoga, they are speaking about the um, six enemies, six enemies. This is um, Shat Ripus, Ripu, uh, enemy, and Shat means six. And uh, this is something which is creating big problem to our life. And this, to satisfy these urges mm, related, urge related to the greed, this is the, uh, this, uh, this is the urge of that enemy inside us. Mm? That enemy inside us. So we should not, uh, we should not follow, you know, the urge of that enemy, mm? but we should follow the urge of our soul. Mm -hmm. and not of some negativity which is inside. So this is in uh, one text later in the Bible where, where uh, Jesus says we, should, we cannot sit on the two chairs at the same time or to have two masters. We cannot have two masters and serve two masters at the same time. Whether we are serving the enemy or we are serving the, 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 our soul, or, or we are serving that which is the enemy of the soul. So this is the recommendation from Ayurveda. Hmm? And one enemy is greed. Greed is lobha. Hmm? Lobha. Um, from the teaching of yoga, <clears throat> you know that there are certain... Um, Uh, basic um, instincts of our life expressed with our individual existence. When we are born, then we are getting kind of a feeling of our um, individual identity. I am. I am. Asmi. In Sanskrit, it is Asmi. I am. Like <coughs> ego. They say asmita, <coughs> asmita is that ego, I am. So then when that feeling of I starts to experience the life around itself, it is related to the life, <coughs> gets different experiences. And uh, in those experiences, <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> we are going through the different uh, feelings, hmm? different feelings of happiness, sorrow, joy, of hatred, of, uh, you know, grief, um, fear, as I said, jealousy, all this what is written here. Hmm? We are going through all those situations. But uh, that I, when it is individual and not knowing about its true nature, then it is in ignorance about itself. Hmm? Avidya. This is the first, the first, uh, the first. Uh, Patanjali is calling that kleshas. Hmm? The first klesha is avidya. It means the ignorance. Avidya means ignorance about what? About who I am. It's not enough to have feeling of I and having a feeling of our own identity, asmita. But what is that I? Who is that I? What is the true nature of that I? So this is missing. This is avidya. 
and ignorance. Because of that ignorance, then that wrong idea of I is there. <clears throat> it is not real nature of the I which we are living. I am. Not that I am, but the, the I am which is um, wrong identity. Hmm? Wrong. It is illusion. Hmm? It is related to the the one enemy which is called the moha. Moha enemy means illusion, delusion. We are in the state of delusion about our identity. We don't know the true reality of our identity. And because of that, that asmita is there, which is leading to the greed, to lobha, lobha another enemy. So moha one enemy, illusion, not knowing what we really are, and then on that basis also lobha, the greed. Then uh, <clears throat> that small I just wants everything for itself. Hmm? Become greedy, hmm? egoistic, hmm? become ego egoism. Hmm? <clears throat> so in that sense, from those clashes are uh, developing those enemies. When the clashes come in the strong way expressed in our life, then they are turning into our own enemies and leading us in a um, problematic way of life. So like this, the, <clears throat> the other, no, the anger, uh, because, and uh, also shamelessness, vanity. Vanity is also like egoism. It is uh, also related to the mother, mother that um, uh, another enemy. So one moha, delusion, illusion, and lobha, greed, and mada is the um, vanity or egoism or pride or shamelessness also. The person uh, just uh, is full of his ego and his, uh, he, he has no shame about anything. Hmm? He wants to, <clears throat> to rule over everything. And uh, so these all become the enemies. Hmm? And, uh, <clears throat> and jealousy, hmm? it's called Matsarya enemy in Sanskrit, jealousy. And the too much of attachment, hmm? raga, shamelessness also to raga. And, uh, and uh, raga means, uh, the desire, hmm? desire, and from that is uh, coming the enemy karma. Karma, karma is too much attachment and lust, hmm? lust, karma, uh, greed. Hmm? Also, it is uh, connected with that. So all those, <clears throat> they are in interaction. Hmm? Those enemies, sometimes a few of them at the same time. <laughs> uh, uh, ruling our mind. So those enemies are then internal structures in our, uh, they are structured in the subconscious level of our consciousness and they are ruling our conscious mind. And they are projecting in the outer world to other situations, to different situations and the different peoples, different people. Then we have outer enemies. The outer enemy is the projection of this inner enemy. That's why yoga is looking inside. We need to look to ourselves and see what is happening in ourselves <clears throat> and recognizing those enemies within us and then not cooperating with them, not cooperating with them. So if we know something is not good, then we don't follow that. And related to that, yoga is giving the technique how to do that. We will come to that later when we go to the yogic text. <clears throat> but just to see here, there is advice. We should not uh, follow those urges related to the greed, grief, fear, anger, vanity. When we become conscious of these things, so we should not uh, attached to these things to, to fulfill those urges, uh, to satisfy those urges. So we should just 
be indifferent to them, not, not cooperate with them. But more detailed methods will be later explained. <clears throat> so also, uh, one should also refrain from letting loose the urges of speaking extremely harsh words and uh, backbiting, lying and use of untimely words and violence to others whosoever urge, uh, um, urges relating to such physical action, including adultery, theft and persecution are to be restrained. Mm -hmm. The virtuous one who is free from all vices related to mind, speech and physical actions is indeed happy and he alone enjoys the fruits of virtue or dharma, wealth, artha and desire, kama. <coughs> so the virtuous one who is free from all vices related to the mind, speech and physical actions, it means who is following this, what is previously said, is indeed happy and alone enjoys the fruits of the virtue or dharma. What is dharma, the yama niyama, these five yama qualities, five niyama qualities are called sanatana dharma. Ten, ten values of sanatana dharma. It means eternal dharma. And dharma means righteousness. The righteousness is the highest principle in the universe. Righteousness. And all the principles of yama and niyama are in the service of the righteousness. <clears throat> They should be in the service of the righteousness. Then, then they are valid. <laughs> then they are valid in their field. So without dharma, dharma means without being righteous. The, the wealth is not um, um, dharma, artha, kama. The, uh, the wealth is not achieved. What kind of wealth? This is the wisdom. Hmm? And the wisdom, I'm just little uh, changing the way of uh, <clears throat> understanding those translations. Um, so when you are able to follow those instructions, which are mentioned previously in Ayurveda and put them through practice of yoga in that practice, have experience and the information and experience gives knowledge, then the dharma is the, uh, leading to the living the knowledge in the life as a wisdom. And this is the wisdom is that wealth, artha. And then that wisdom is leading to the fulfillment or karma experience. And the, and the fulfillment is leading to liberation, moksha. Here is not mentioned moksha, but should be the moksha, the last. <clears throat> so without righteousness, there is no liberation. Without achieving dharma, you cannot move anywhere in that direction towards the purpose of our evolution. So <clears throat> then Ayurveda speaks here about some characteristics of a people which are not um, supported to be our company, which we should avoid the company of such a people because they will always drag us into negativity and uh, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> creating uh, trouble and everything. So such wretched human beings who are of sinful conduct, speech and mind, backbiters, those who are quarrelsome by nature, they are all, they are all the time quarreling <clears throat> they always find some reason to, to quarrel, you know, those who indulge in sarcastic remarks about others, the greedy, those who envy the prosperity of others, the cruel, those who indulge in defaming others, the fickle minded, those who serve the enemy, those devoid of compassion, and those who do not follow the virtuous course of life are to be boycott it. It means ignoring those kind of people, not mixing with them, not, not spending the, the lifetime with such people because <clears throat> um, 
It is also some saying from the Christ later, we will relate to that. It will be more clear. Um, what uh, he says, uh, we should not throw the pearls uh, in front of the pigs because they will smash them. They don't know what it is. So, okay, then suitable persons for company. <clears throat> Those who have attained maturity by virtue of wisdom, learning, <clears throat> age, conduct, patience, memory, and meditation. Those who are matured and learned ones. Those who maintain the company of matured persons. Those who are acquainted with the human nature. Those who are devoid of all anxieties. Those who are well behaved with everybody. Those who are pacified, those who follow righteous course of action, those who advocate good conduct, and those who, whose very name and sight are auspicious should be accompanied. <clears throat> so this is the recommendation from Charaka Samhita. <clears throat> now, on that basis, we see... Um, uh, in our relation to other people, because they say the same uh, uh, birds fly together, the similar birds fly together in the same um, <clears throat> group. So then which characteristic of people we should spend time and uh, which, which we should avoid. But this is Achara Rasayana related to us. What Ayurveda is expecting from us <clears throat> how uh, how we should be that we uh, develop those good qualities in us and uh, we need to transform our character and becoming a better person by following this achara rasayana principle and this is leading to the health because positivity increase in us sattva increase in our consciousness and it is bringing more balance in the, the function of physiology, strengthening immune system. And Ayurveda says, if who regularly, uh, if persons endowed with those qualities, if we are developing those qualities in us and practice, practice at the same time rejuvenation therapy, they get all the rejuvenation effects described above. Thus, thus, the rejuvenation effects of good conduct are described. <clears throat> so it is like um, taking Rasayana, you know, in Ayurveda, Rasayana is something which is supporting the life, which is the basis of life, Rasa. Uh, Rasa is the basis for the development of all other tissues, for the, for the health of all our body. And Rasayana is something which is strengthening the value of the Rasa um, in our body. So this is the not uh, any kind of food items or some herbs or anything, but these are the men, this is mental approach. If we follow those uh, recommendations, then the, that condition of our consciousness will be such that it is supporting the um, strength of our body, immune, immunity, and the health, and have a rejuvenating effect on our body. <clears throat> so the persons who are truthful and free from anger. So these are the qualities which we should live in our life, who are devoid of alcohol and sex indulgence. And here I would add the drugs also, the drugs and, who do not indulge in violence or exhaustion, who are peaceful and pleasing in their speech, who practice japa or meditation in a way and cleanliness, who are dhira, stable and steady, who regularly practice charity and tapas. The charity means giving nature, supporting other people. And uh, tapas means uh, refraining from doing 
negative things. What we know that it's not good, we don't do that. This is the highest tapas. Tapas is not just uh, torturing our body by hunger or, you know, the different kind of uh, <clears throat> physical um, restrictions, but to be able to resist temptation, hmm? Uh, to do wrong thing, uh, it is the tapas. And tapas is always practiced with the help of the Ishvara or the God. Hmm? It goes with the uh, Ishvara Pranidhana. The tapas goes with Ishvara Pranidhana. Swadhyaya goes with Ishvara Pranidhana. Hmm? Santosha goes with Ishvara Pranidhana. Shaucha goes with Ishvara Pranidhana. These are the practices related to the relation with the God. Along with those practices, you need to have that feeling. Why you are doing that? To be on the image of the God, how we are created, you know, to, um, to become like that intelligence, cosmic intelligence. I use the name God as a, but uh, don't need to be in a religious context to existing religions. So it is some cosmic intelligence which is ruling the whole life in the universe. Whatever name we give him, doesn't matter. <clears throat> and it is everywhere. That intelligence is present in the stone, in here, there, everywhere. So God is everywhere, omnipresent. So in that sense, we want to, um, and uh, <clears throat> so we want to achieve unity with that intelligence, our individual life to be one with the cosmic life on the level of the intelligence or, and consciousness. So this is that aim. <clears throat> Tapas, uh, who regularly offer prayers to the gods, Cows, Brahmans, teachers, preceptors, and all people who are absolutely free from barbarous acts, who are compassionate, <coughs> whose period of awakening and sleep are regular, who habitually take milk and ghee, who are acquainted with the measurement of things appropriate to the country and the time. Um, some, you know, these are. Um, <clears throat> the recommendations, but you need to consider the time when the text is written. Then, uh, for example, the milk, what they are saying in Ayurveda, it's real milk from the cow, which is the happy cow, but not the milk which you buy in the shop from those uh, animals, cows, which are tortured and uh, which are, uh, you know, fed with so many antibiotics or kind of chemicals and everything. And then the quality of that milk is not nourishing much with the hormones and all the things, but real milk from the happy cow hmm? and the ghee from such a... <clears throat> so the, all and other some things who are free from ego, whose conduct is good, who are not narrow-minded, who, uh, who have love for spiritual knowledge, who have in excellent sense organs and conditions, who have reverence for seniors, those who believe in the existence of God and the valid validity of the knowledge of the Vedas, and persons having self-control and who regularly study scriptures get the best out of rejuvenation therapy. So these are <coughs> something what uh, we should stray, uh, have a goal hmm, to achieve. Now, <clears throat> Patanjali, uh, the teaching of yoga in that relation, the, um, the sutra number 33, the mind becoming purified by the cultivation of feelings of, uh, the mind becomes purified by the cultivation of feelings of amity, compassion, goodwill, and indifference respectively towards the happy, miserable, virtuous, and sinful creatures. So <clears throat> what Patanjali is giving suggestion? What should be uh, the way, what should be the way in which we relate to such conditions which we are facing in our life? Sinful creatures, how we relate to them? 
in which way those who are virtuous, those who are miserable, and those who are happy. And then he is giving these <coughs> qualities, Maitri, Karuna, Mudita, Upekshana. And if we are able to have these qualities, Maitri, friendliness, Karuna, compassion, Mudita, happiness, and Upekshana, indifference, so it means Maitri, friendliness towards the <coughs> happy people. You are not jealous if somebody is happy, but you are, you are just friendly. You like people to be happy. You are friendly to, that, to others' happiness. Karuna, the compassion. If somebody is miserable or suffering, then you have compassion. You relate with that value to that person with the compassion. Not by, you know, uh, intellectualizing to that person, you are miserable because you don't know this, 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 and uh, condemning the person because of his ignorance or whatever. But the first instance, how you relate is your heart overflows to that person in the compassion. And this is helping those person to come out from that miserable condition. Then mudita, happiness. So to those who are successful in, in life, virtuous, so you are happy about their uh, success. You are happy about success of others. And those who are <coughs> negative, sinful people, you know, in their, <coughs> you, you don't take to your heart their negativities. You ignore. You don't relate to these kind of uh, things. And then the negativity is spreading. <clears throat> if you allow negativity of the others to come into your heart, then your heart will start to radiate that negativity uh, and you become in a negative way thinking slowly and uh, spreading that negativity further. So <clears throat> the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi said we need to be like an ocean. Then all rivers come into the ocean from all sides, getting the mud. <clears throat> the, so there is a, a lot of space, mud can settle down and then the surface remains clean. <clears throat> so you don't allow from one side mud to go to the other side. Hmm? So you don't uh, entertain negativities on the basis of others' negativities. Uh, <clears throat> then this is the, then, if you are having those, if you pay attention to have those qualities, live that in life, then you will get the peace of the mind, chitta prasadana. Your consciousness, your consciousness will be blessed with peace and happiness. Your life is then blessed by peace and happiness, chitta prasadana. Then, <clears throat> then. Uh, Patanjali speaks uh, about the uh, niyamas. Tapah svadhyaya ishvara pranidhana ni kriya yogaha. Then he speaks about this tapas, what is the <coughs> austerity, uh, self-discipline, mental, moral, and physical svadhyaya. This we already said, ishvara pranidhana. This is the kriya yoga. And uh, by that practice of that Kriya Yoga, you are reducing those clashes, no? the clashes or these uh, obstacles to, to have peace and happiness in life. No? These clashes are leading to the klishta, means klishta means painful experience, experience of suffering in life. So <clears throat> these are uh, the, those. Uh, um, <clears throat> qualities of the life which lead to the suffering, ignorance, hmm? then egoism, hmm? then raga, hmm? aversion, and abhinivesha, fear of death. These are the five pleasures. So, Avidya, we said, we don't know who we are. <clears throat> we don't, we know many things. We are, we finish the school primer, we finish university, we become Doctoral degree in many things, we become the greatest expert in the world for anything, but we don't know who we are. The basic ignorance is there. <clears throat> what, for what use is doctoral degree if you don't know who you, who you are? <clears throat> I mean, for your own life, for your profession, it's okay. But related to the purpose of your life and living, it is not even 
um, achieving the status of uh, uh, beginning of life. So this is the, the biggest uh, obstacle, ignorance. If you don't know who, who you are, then you have wrong identity. You know I am, but you know that I am such and such on the opinion of other people or whatever you create through the experiences, opinion of yourself, this is what you are. But this has nothing to do with your true I. So then this you are living that wrong identity, asmita, <clears throat> and then on that basis, uh, uh, desires are their cravings in life everything then if you are not able to fulfill desires you um, you dim to avoid suffering you diminish you you are diminishing the value of the object all oh, this is no good object uh, the negation hmm, of existence so that you avoid suffering the the dvesha for example some person <coughs> you you have desire loving that person, everything, but person don't react to you, then you cannot fulfill your desire. Then what happens? Then you start slowly, the love turns to the hatred. Hmm? Then you start uh, finding the faults of that person. This is the dvesha. Raga and dvesha goes together. And <clears throat> and uh, um, it's always the play of life like that. Uh, when we are under such things, hmm? and then Adhinivesha fear of that. <clears throat> this is the fear for existence. And this is the basis for the stress and stress reaction in life which we experience. <clears throat> it is those, uh, 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 we can say, instincts, basic instincts of our life, which are deeply rooted in our subconscious. Uh, at the basis of the, <clears throat> this is that intelligence which is ruling, influencing the function of autonomic nervous system. And then Abhini Vesha, when you experience something, it's threatened to your life, that fear for survival comes, then gives order to autonomous, autonomous nervous system, react with the fight and flight. This is the stress reaction. <clears throat> so this is the, how this creates problem in our life, those clashes. Especially when they come in a very expressed value, they called udara in Sanskrit, very expressed. Then they turn into the enemy. So how you can uh, um, remove the enemies in the life? Those six, which were said, lobha, kroda, mada, um, matsarya, kama, moha, by <coughs> reducing the clashes, then the enemies are dying. <laughs> Because the clashes are born <coughs> with, our, <coughs> with our life, but the enemies are born during our life. During the, our lifetime, those enemies are born. But the clashes are born with us. They are coming along with us. <coughs> so that's why Patanjali says, you need to reduce klesha tamukarana. Reduce the clashes, then enemies are gone. And then this disturbing condition on your mind or on your consciousness is gone. Then your consciousness becomes sattvic, conducive for the state of self-realization, that you realize who you truly are and remove ignorance about your true existence. And then when ignorance is removed, then all other clashes collapse <laughs> because they are all based on the ignorance, their existence. So then um, <clears throat> Patanjali says, Vitarka Padhane Pratipaksha Bhavana. Um, if you notice, Pratipaksha Bhavana means think opposite. If you become aware in your consciousness that there are appearing some thoughts which are contra to the teaching of Yama Niyama, which are opposite to them, then you need to cherish that the thought which is opposite to them, but in accord with yama niyama. Hmm? This is pratipaksha, prati means contra, thinking contra bhavanam, thinking. <clears throat> so then 
you need to cherish the positive. That's why you must have knowledge of what is good in life. What are the qualities, true qualities of life, how the life should be. And this is the teaching of Yama Niyama. If you have that knowledge and you are educated in that, then you know what comes, which is not in accord with that, which is a negative thought, you know. For example, ahimsa comes the thought of himsa. You want to do violence to someone or hurt someone. If this comes, then you immediately, you know, oh, ahimsa. And then you shift your awareness to ahimsa value. And when your awareness is there, you think about ahimsa, then the himsa is gone. Hmm? You are turning to the light. And these negative thoughts are like the dark clouds which appear on the beautiful sky. And then the positive thoughts is like the sun and the clean sky with the sun. So when <coughs> you turn, the negative is the signal that you immediately turn to positive. Don't deal with the negative anymore. Just bring in your awareness the contra, the positive, and it's enough. You, you turn towards the sun and the sun will eat that cloud. It, it will disappear. The dark clouds are disappearing. By turning your awareness, your attention to the positive. It is very little. No, there is no fight. Don't fight with negativity. Don't suppress negativity. There is a suppression. But just realize its existence is there. Okay. Then your intellect... This is the mind, manas, then buddhi. Oh, this is, this should be like that. And then uh, ahamkara, I <coughs> turn to the light. This is your decision. Ahamkara is your will. And then the thing is over. These are antarkaranas. Manas, buddhi, ahamkara. How you practice yoga. How you deal in your internal life with such a things. And becoming and changing. Then you do something positive. <clears throat> so you don't follow why they are coming from the old impressions, from samskaras, coming some ideas, maybe some negative. And then on that basis, you go to the action. You see, uh, you sow another, the same seed. But what you need to do, as uh, Jesus Christ said, you need to see a new seed to have a new crop. So uh, to sowing the new seed is the old seeds sprouting in that negative thought, then ignore and make contra and act upon that positive. So then you, you were sowing the new seed, which will give another quality of to your experience in your action, which will give another uh, impression. Hmm? Like this, you are transforming your character. You are sowing the new seeds to have a new crop, to change yourself. Don't uh, <coughs> use the old seeds. Hmm? This is that Pratipaksha Bhavana. It's the same teaching. And then uh, <coughs> actions arising out of uh, bad thoughts, hmm? like injury, everything. <coughs> so whether uh, done by another or approved or performed either through anger, greed, or delusion, can be mild, moderate, or intense. They are causes of infinite misery and unending ignorance is the contrary thought. So this kind of thing is, um, if we follow that, then we will never uh, have peace in life. <clears throat> we will always be in the confusion, in the negative moods and uh, ruining our health and everything. So we need to use our will. Hmm? This is, that's why we have ahamkara hmm? or asmita, ego, feeling of I am. Why I am? What is the purpose of I am? Is to live in accord with the will of God or with the laws of uh, which are positive, the yamas and niyamas. Hmm? For that, uh, I have the I am. So this is the steps on which I can evolve and reach somewhere. Then just few words and then we will end them uh, related to the New Testament, the words of the Jesus Christ. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This, the words proceeds, these are the qualities of Yama and Niyama. 
So it means not only the <clears throat> thinking of this uh, physical existence, everything, but we need to apply those principles in our life. Then this is giving us life. Then we are alive. Hmm? Do not resist an evil person. <clears throat> but whosoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn out uh, the other to, all, to him also. This, is, this means this Pratipaksha Bhavana. Uh, negative. So you don't go with negative to the negative, but you change that negative into the positive. This is symbolic. This, it means that. So, and what is the aim? That we become perfect as our father in heaven. So how we can become perfect? That we can uh, start uh, thinking like the God is thinking. Start uh, uh, doing the action the same way. <clears throat> Then all yoga, kriya yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga are lived at once. So when you do charitable deed, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That your charitable deed may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. This is that kind of humbleness and uh, that... Uh, <clears throat> um, that you are not under the, the grip of the enemy of egoism. Hmm? When you pray, go into the, your room and you shut your door, pray to the father who is in the secret place. So this is, it means close your, the doors of the senses, all like, like Shambhuki Mudra in the yogic practice or meditation, withdraw, pratyahara, hmm? withdraw in and then dive deep in into the transcendental field of life, which is the secret place, hidden be, be, beyond the finest relative level of existence. <clears throat> then also the, the value of forgiveness we need to practice in our life. If we are not able to forgive, we are not able to let go. And if we are not able to let go, we are disturbing the <clears throat> normal flow of the life and our development because how we are developing mentally or physically, uh, receiving something in us mentally, digesting that, <coughs> taking some knowledge, then uh, what is the waste? What is not useful? Negative thoughts, emotions, let go. And then this let go. And then again, you are growing like that. But if you cannot let go of negativity, then you are stuck and you, it leads to the illness at the end like the mental, so like this physical. Hmm? The apana value is not functioning on the level of the body or apana, mental apana, it's uh, not functioning. And you have uh, mental toxins, like negative feelings suppressed in the... Don't... <clears throat> um, the lamp of the... Uh, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. It, he speaks here about proprioception, <laughs> which is main teaching of yoga, inner eye, hmm? inner light to develop by uh, the, uh, developing proprioception. Hmm? And then you can know yourself from inside hmm? and there is no darkness inside anymore. Hmm? <clears throat> so, Um, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. And this is the principles of Yama and Niyama also. <clears throat> don't do to the others what you don't want that others do to you. So this is the law of uh, uh, reciprocity. Hmm? What you are doing to others, you are doing that to yourself. How you relate to yourself, this is the way how you relate to the others or how you relate to the others. This is the way how you relate to, to yourself. If you see you have problem in relation with the others, it means you have also a problem in relation with yourself. So uh, <clears throat> whether looking inside your own life or looking outside your own life, you have the knowledge. Where is the, what you need to change in yourself? Hmm? <clears throat> So, mm. 
Well, I went a little over time, but uh, the topic is of that nature. So I just wanted to give you uh, some of these recommendations from the field of Ayurveda and practical advices from the field of yoga and the statements from Jesus Christ as a person who were living that in, uh, in the practical way in his life and showing the way to the people. Hmm? So thank you very much. If you have any question, maybe two, three minutes uh, we can use. <clears throat> uh, Yadranko, good afternoon. Uh, can you share this uh, power, uh, PowerPoint with us, please, on the email? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. It was yes. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yadranko? Yes. This is Tony from Bonn. Yes, Tony. Uh, I, I saw in one of your uh, quotes from from Charaka, I think it was, uh -huh. that in, indifference should also be practiced towards friendly and unfriendly people. And indifference, uh, as I have understood it so far, means to ignore other people and to uh -huh. be cruel to them because you don't even observe them, you ignore them. Uh -huh. It and is. that is what I wonder about. How can we practice ignore? Uh, ignore uh, we can, how can we ignore friends and enemies? No, it is uh, here. Patanjali says, <coughs> "Maitri karuna mudita upekshanam, hmm? upekshanam towards the negativity." Hmm? But uh, those who are positive, friendly hmm? attitude. But the other thing is the you know, leading to the state of uh, uh, liberation, hmm? even from the influence to be beyond good and bad, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> which is the, that state of transcendental consciousness. It is the practice of the, Patanjali says, Abhyasa and Vairagya, the 12th sutra of the first chapter. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Abhyasa is the practice and Vairagya, hmm? Vairagya means disassociating, hmm? disassociating from anything. The subject and the object is always rag, uh, you know, <coughs> like uh, sarupyam, hmm? mixed together. So you, the practice of, uh, of uh, Vairagya, dissociating from Good and in the relative, there is good and bad, everything, but you go beyond both of them to go okay. to the transcendental and realize your true nature is transcendental, it's beyond good and bad in that sense. Okay. And then you are living that in the life in that sense that you are equal. <coughs> I mean, you are untouched. Mm -hmm. You are whether somebody is praising you or condemning you, you are not disturbed at all. I see. So it's like going beyond the three gunas. Yes, yes, yes. And you have reached indifference. Yes, yes. Only okay. in that way. Hmm? Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Do you give these lectures uh, regularly? Because it's the first time that I've noticed. Uh, yes, it is uh, announced. Uh, we send uh, next, uh, now, day after tomorrow, <clears throat> I am inviting everyone at four o'clock in the afternoon, the same time, they are on Wednesday, 19th. We have the guest from the Kerala, the master of Kalari Payato and Marma Chikitsa. Mm -hmm. It is uh, also related to the Ayur celebrating Ayurveda day. So he will speak about that ancient, uh, <clears throat> ancient, we can say, um, practice for the health of the body and how to use the marmas for healing, marma chikitsa, and uh, how this is applied in, in the an ancient martial art, Kalari, uh, which was cherished, cherished in Kerala. Hmm? It is and on it Wednesday. Will, it will be very interesting. Hmm? Will that be on Wednesday? Yes, on Wednesday at four o'clock. So you oh. are all invited to to um, <clears throat> participate so that, on that webinar. These are free webinars, yes, which everybody can participate. And on that day, unfortunately, for example, I have an appointment. Uh, 
Would you also give out any links so that we yes, can- Yes, this uh, at the end of the webinar, then I put it on a YouTube channel free. So oh, that's great. Then you can find the recording on the YouTube channel. YouTube channel under yes. your name. Yes, yes, yes. Also today's lecture. Yes, today's and the previous lectures also. Oh, good to know. Thank yes, you. they yeah. are all there. <laughs> that's fine. <clears throat> so thank you very much for uh, being um, present and I wish you a beautiful rest of the day and see you on Wednesday. Okay. So see you then. Thank you. All the best. Hvala puno, Jadranko. Hvala, molim. Hvala. Say good day.